Okay, how's your brain going so far? Is that all right? Now, what I'm going to do um, to finish here is to show you a useful shortcut. I'm going to put an asterisk next to it, which is that what I'm about to show you is not obligatory, it's not compulsory. Uh, you have to know how to do polynomial long division, but this shortcut I'm about to show you, you do not have to know, it's not in the syllabus, but it's very useful, okay? So this shortcut, you can make a little subheading, is called synthetic division. It's not long division, it's synthetic division. Now, my encouragement to you is um, synthetic division is a shortcut. It's really good to know if you are hurting for time. You're like at the end of an exam. You only have five minutes left. You've got a couple of questions left. And one of them ends up being a polynomial that you have to divide. That five minutes is going to get sucked up by this whole process. Okay? And you're like, wait, but I have another thing that I have to need to go on to. Okay? That's when I would pull out something like this. Or alternatively, you've got an answer. You're like, oh, I think that's it. You want to check it. Well, you've got another way to make sure that you have the right answer. Okay? Now, synthetic division relies on the fact that, have a look at this long division here, or, or that long division over there. Do you see a huge amount of it is kind of wasted because the important parts are the numbers. Do you agree? Like uh, the 0 and the 2, uh, this negative 2, this negative 4, those are the things we're actually operating on. Yes? The x cubed, the x squared, the x's, they just kind of sit in the background there, just like place value, right? When I write 1,005, it would take me so much longer if I had to literally write out 1,000, 0 hundreds, 0 tens, and 5 units. Saying thousands, hundreds, tens, and units is kind of unnecessary. The numbers are really the important thing, yes? So the first thing that synthetic division does is it doesn't write down all the x's. It just writes down the numbers. So what I'm going to do is think about uh, the... Let's do that first one again, and I'll show you because we can do a parallel here. The first one we did, see this divisor here? I'm going to write the zero of this divisor. Think about that. I introduced this term yesterday or the day before. The zero of this is a value of x that makes this... Zero, right? So what value of x do I put in here to make it zero? Negative two. I'll write that down. And then the next thing is I'm going to write down all of the numbers, the coefficients of my dividend, right? Uh, look at the original question that we did. I think the first one was three. Is it three? Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me the rest because I just rubbed it off, which was very three, clever. Minus one. Minus one. Seven. 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 Okay. Thank you. So these are the numbers, these are the things that really matter, okay? In my mind, I'm kind of remembering, well, the last number was a constant, right? It's always, I mean, if it was zero, it'd be zero, zero constant. This is an x, this is an x squared, this is an x cubed. So when I look at this, it's implied that this is a cubic, or it stands for a number in a cubic, okay? Now, I'm still about to do a division, but this is a different kind of division, so to distinguish a little bit, I'm going to draw my division sign upside down. Okay? Just to make it look a little different, yeah. So that three there, I'm pretty sure that was the coefficient that I started with. Right there, see that? I, I, I did have it written on the board, okay? Three, negative one, seven, negative four. Is that okay? Yep, so I have to write down every single one. Obviously, this is frequently a one, but it doesn't have to be a one, okay? All right, I'm gonna do something else weird. I'm going to put another line down here, just to structure my working, as you'll see in a minute. This line here is roughly equivalent to all of these lines that you've drawn in there. We don't need to draw them for synthetic division. Okay. And um, now the actual algorithm begins. So I'm going to show it to you once, and I'm going to go through it, and then I'm going to ask you to do it again for me, and you're going to have to walk me through. Okay. So the first thing is I need a new color. See that leading coefficient there, the 3? I'm just going to write it down. I'm just going to write down, like directly, I don't have to do any working with it. I'm just going to write down a 3. Okay? And then here, you know how with long division, there's a process that kind of loops around and around and around and around. Okay? I'm going to show you the process that loops here. Okay? It's very similar to this one, but ever so slightly different to make things a bit easier for your brain. Okay? Here are the steps. See this number? 
I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply, that gives me negative 6. I'm going to write that underneath the next column because, of course, I've got to go through the x squared, the x's, and the constant. I multiplied. Now I'm going to add. You okay with that? I just added down the column. Okay. So I multiplied to get this, and then I added to get that. And now I rinse and repeat. I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to add. You okay with that? One last time, I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to add. Hmm. So before I interpret this, because this is the answer, you finished. Do you see how this is a shortcut, right? Um, the first thing I did was I just wrote down the leading coefficient. It just straight down, no working required. But once I've got that there, my loop is that I multiply and add. Multiply and add, multiply and add. Okay, now it requires a bit of thinking to interpret this thing, right? You are dividing a cubic, degree three, by a linear divisor, degree one. So your answer ought to be of degree two, right? So therefore, if this is degree two, and that's the leading term, this is three x to the power of two. There's the next term, there's the next term. What do you think the final number is? It's the remainder. That was quick, right? I even actually explained it to you. I was talking through it, and it was still faster, dramatically faster, okay? So <laughs> if you have a look carefully, have a look at these numbers here. See these numbers that we've written down? Do you notice that every single one of those numbers is in your original working? Right? Do you recognize the negative 7, the 14, the negative 46? They're all there. It's the same thing. We're doing the same thing. Okay? Why is this faster? And not just faster, it's less error prone. Two reasons. Number one, we didn't write all of the x's, which is part, like, that takes half the time, right? And all of the space as well. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is, when I get this, what do I do with it to get to the next line? From here to here, what do I do? I subtract, don't I? I have to do subtraction all the way, okay? Now, subtraction is problematic for two reasons. Number one, our brains aren't as good at subtraction, right? We're good at adding things together. You put things into a pile, how many are there, right? Not only are we better at addition, generally speaking, um, we don't have to deal with double negatives when you add because you're never subtracting a negative, you're adding negatives. Do you see that? Negative one plus negative six is negative seven, okay? How come I'm adding rather than subtracting? Because that's kind of opposite, right? Isn't it because you change the sign of that constant? So, see this guy at the front? And that's the other thing to take it notice of, right? This guy here is the zero of the divisor. OK? So, since what I did right at the get-go is I actually turned this whole thing upside down, right? Instead of going x plus 2, I'm thinking about negative 2. That changes the sign of everything, right? So that's why I'm adding rather than subtracting. Okay, now I really like this method because it is faster and is less error prone. In addition to that, see how over here you're like, oh, gross, I divided by a quadratic. I wasn't kidding, 95% of the time you're dividing by something linear. Okay, so because this process is basically geared towards that, that's why you just, like that three, how did I find out that it was three down there? Well, if you always divide by a monic linear thing, then this will always just be you're dividing by one. That's all you're doing. Okay, so. Let's see if you know how to do this. Let's come up with a new polynomial. And you're going to talk me through it. Kind of like matrices before Ah, uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, because you're not writing the x's, you're just writing the coefficients. Okay. Um, let's actually, do you guys have your laptops there? Your laptops there? Let's pick a question. Monic linear factors, which is 95% of the kinds of questions you'll get. Wait, so you can't do it with. Uh, you can, but it's not worth it. You can, but it's not worth it. Okay, here we go. I've, I'm pulling this out of 4C. It's question 2, part D. Question 2, part D. So, this is what we get. 2x cubed. Is anyone there? So they can read it to me? Yep, in um, 4C. What's the next? Is it 15? Yeah, just 15 x minus 14. Okay, and what's our divisor? Uh, x minus 3. Okay, so 
<clears throat> what do I write? I'll give you a start. Here's the, here's the uh, big upside down division sign, right? What's the very first number I need to put? Okay, it's the zero of this guy, which is three. What goes on the right hand side? Okay, there's my first coefficient. Good, don't forget the negative sign. Okay, good, fantastic. Underneath my big division sign, what do I put? Another line. Another line? Okay. Yeah, and now I get to just bring down the leading coefficient. And now it's my repeating step. Here comes my cycle. Okay, tell me what to write. Okay, so that gives me six. Yeah, and good. Go again. Add. Go again. Last one. How's that? You see how much quicker that was? It's just, you know, it just takes away all the extraneous stuff. Okay, uh, that's not an answer. That's what we're going to use. We're going to interpret that to come up with an answer. You divided a cubic by a linear. So what do you expect the answer to be? This is a quadratic, right? So this is the x squared term. This is the x term. And this is your constant, which leaves one last number as the remainder. Dunskies. Okay. So let me mention again. Um, if you find this, you're like, my brain is too full. Just mastering like long division. Okay. If you have to make a hard call, this is the one you have to learn. Okay. Um, people often look at this and they're like, what even is this? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Okay. Um, including sometimes markers. They'll look at this and be like, mm, okay. Um, however, if you're hurting for time, you can answer this question twice as fast as you can with this. You just have to write this thing out, right? So if you're hurting for time, do it. If you're checking an answer, do it. Um, if you're an extension two student and you're like, I've got something else to worry about in this question, this is just like the warm up, okay? Then do it because you have like seven other marks in this question you need to really worry about. So just get this out of the way and get over with it, okay?